Hey everyone, so it's me, uh, Ben, or GNC-centric. So this is going to be my third video about my experience of female sex dysphoria. So I've done one on my breast dysphoria, one on my internal bottom dysphoria, and now I'm doing one on my external bottom dysphoria. Uh, so like those videos, before I start, I just want to explain the difference between sex dysphoria and gender dysphoria. So sex dysphoria is internal and personal and it's how you perceive your body um and gender dysphoria is external and social and it's more about fulfilling gender roles and um passing so uh these three videos are all about sex dysphoria um i'm really nervous to make this video this is my second take of it um before this video, the only person I've ever spoken to out loud about this is um, my best friend from my last video that I mentioned, um, DJ. Um, I wrote about it in my medium piece, but it's different speaking about it out loud. Um, okay, so really briefly, I'm going to tell you kind of what this dysphoria is like, and then I'm going to give you the long explanation. So it's kind of like phantom limb syndrome phantom limb syndrome like I would feel like I had a penis but it wasn't there so I'm gonna start at the beginning so first this video is gonna be two parts one part is gonna be explaining some of the stuff that led up to my dysphoria and the second part is gonna be explaining of how I experienced it and how I tried to handle it um, so as I mentioned in some of my other videos, I grew up in a kind of conservative Christian household as a child. Um, we weren't allowed to talk about having crushes on people or like our friends having crushes on people even. My mom would be like, oh don't hang out with those kids, they're not like good influence or whatever. Um, like I said, my parents had a very unhealthy relationship with each other and like they never hugged or kissed in front of us or anything like that. Um, and we were told we weren't allowed to date um, until we were 25. And my parents continuously said that, or my mom at least, continuously said that until we were like the end of high school. Um, so that was a weird environment to grow up in. And as I also explained in my other video, I had almost no knowledge of my own anatomy. So like I didn't know I had a vagina until I had my first period and I learned about it. And then, uh, after that, so I had, um, when I was in grade 8 at my Catholic school, I had sex ed that was, like, inside of religion class. It was, like, a health, like, chapter of the course. And, um, the teacher who taught it to us was gay. So even though the book was super heteronormative, and it was very, like, one day you'll get married to a, a woman will marry a man and you'll have babies and stuff like that, he he tried to temper that a little bit just with the, the discussions we had in class and um, so he taught us about anatomy and like to be able to say like penis and vagina out loud without being like ashamed or giggling and stuff so we, we knew all about anatomy and um, he would let us have like open discussions in class about like menstruation or like whatever sexual stuff so he would let us discuss things amongst ourselves and ask questions and then if there's something that he couldn't be in the room for because he's like a teacher um he would be like oh i have to go to the washroom and he would leave so we could still discuss things in like a comfortable environment because he i think he knew that was like the only place we had to ask genuine questions um but even after all that i didn't understand that women could feel sexual pleasure or that they could orgasm and i didn't know what a clitoris was um <clears throat> I mean, he did his best, but he was a gay guy, I guess. Uh, and then also, uh, at the age of 12, some stuff happened, and I ended up going to a psychiatrist, and he told me I had depression and anxiety, and he put me on anti antidepressants. He, my mom wouldn't bring me back to see him, so I never saw him again, so I took the antidepressants for one month, and then I stopped which is like a horrible thing to do. 
um, when I was 14, I got my own doctor, like, without involving my parents. Like, they knew, but they didn't really care. I was like, I'm going to see this doctor once a week for stuff. And they were like, okay. Um, so he prescribed me antidepressants. Um, and I saw him almost every week to talk about, like, everything in my life. <clears throat> uh, so I think because I was on a pretty high dose of antidepressants for, like, such a like big part of my teenage years, um, when I was 18, like, right when I turned 18, something happened and I couldn't get access to my, um, prescriptions. So I was off my antidepressants for, like, a week. And then, um, in my usual sexting with, like, my dom at that point, like, I would sex, but I wouldn't do anything. I would just, like, say stuff that I think he wanted me to say. And I actually felt something. And I was, like... Like, in my body, physically, I felt something. And I was like, oh my god, is this what arousal feels like? And, um... Yeah, so... It wasn't until I was 18 that I actually felt sexual arousal. Um... Uh... I think a lot of this was just... Contributed to me not wanting to be female. To my rejection of my body, and like my hatred and shame about my body. Um, then later I, uh, like I mentioned in another book, when I was like 13, 14, I started reading, uh, like a ton of gay romance and erotica. And so that was really my only frame of reference for what a penis looked like or like how it behaved or worked or whatever. And I mean, they're romance novels, so everything is exaggerated and like inaccurate and very like you know, like lots of stuff that's not actually functional descriptions of anything. So, um, after I started experiencing this type of dysphoria, I kind of became obsessed with, not obsessed, but it was like something I thought about a lot was like how an actual penis looks and how an actual penis works, even though I was actually grossed out by them. Like I didn't want to look at pictures of them, but I wanted to ask my male friends lots and lots of weird questions. Like, so I asked my dom and I asked my friend DJ like specific questions about what it's like to have a penis and how it works, which is like really creepy. I was like 16, 17 at this point. Um, but yeah, so I didn't actually have any knowledge of how male anatomy works. So in retrospect, my like, phantom limb syndrome and my like hallucinations I guess were like actually inaccurate I think but yeah I didn't know so okay so <clears throat> that's all of like the environment before information now I'm going to explain to you exactly how this dysphoria feels so <clears throat> the first time I experienced it I was 15 I was in the car on my, the way home from like a road trip um, my mother and sister were in the front seat they were talking and they had the radio on and I was in the back and I was facing the door away from them and I had my legs crossed and my body kind of curled up and I was kind of sleepy but also really anxious and then suddenly out of nowhere I felt something like against my leg like like a soft dick kind of in between my legs against my leg and I just was like horrified because I like felt it and I and part of me knew it was there but also like obviously it wasn't fucking there so I couldn't move because if I if my eyes went down I would be like evidence it's not there if I moved my body I could I wouldn't feel it moving with my body so I couldn't move it was almost like I couldn't move because I was scared it would go away or I was scared it would make it worse um but it was like really terrifying and I so I was like having a panic attack and I was crying all of this while trying to be quiet and like ignoring my sister and my mother in the front seat and um I just wanted it to go away it was it was like an intrusive thing it was like just there and it wouldn't go away um and like the problem with it like I wanted it to stop because it being there 
was proof that I didn't have a penis, if that makes sense. It was like in my face, like, see, look, you can only imagine it, it's not really there. Um, so yeah, that was when I was 15. So like I said, I hadn't experienced sexual arousal, so it had nothing to do with anything sexual at that point. Um, it would happen every month or two at that point in my life, I think. Um, yeah. Then, after I experienced arousal when I was 18, um, so I mentioned in my other video that when I was on my period, I would ar already feel anxious and dysphoric. So, I was anxious and dysphoric and slightly aroused on my period, and it happened to me again. And this time, while I was aroused, what I felt down there was not a soft penis, it was a hard penis. So, and I was like aroused, so in my mind I was like, this is my body telling me to masturbate, right? Like that's what you're supposed to do. So this was weird because it was kind of, I felt a little bit like I was validating what I was physically feeling, right? Because I felt like I was hard. So my arousal was like a validation of that. But also by moving and touching myself, like that was contradictory to the don't move or you'll know it's not there. So, yeah, the freaking out was, like, even more freaking out. I mean, like I said, I, I didn't figure out how to orgasm for, like, six months or something after I first tried to. And, um, like, this is, like, the worst possible conditions to orgasm. So it didn't work. I would just get more and more anxious and um, uh, eventually, like, be crying and... It was, it, it was particularly bad when it was on my period because after I would have to like clean up the blood or I would have to like handle like having blood on my hands or it was like a physical proof that I'm female. I had to look at it. I had to clean it off. It was proof I was female. Um, and I just, I felt so much shame and disgust and I just wanted it to stop. Uh, so after that time when I was 18, it started to happen more and more often, but I learned that like trying to masturbate to make it go away didn't work. So what I would try and do is like put on a TV show and just like ignore it, but intrusive thoughts don't really work that way. <laughs> they, they don't let you ignore them. So that was bad. Um, yeah, so because this was directly tied to my libido and like I could tell like before I had my period and while I was on my period was when it would happen and then like after my period there was like two weeks where it wouldn't happen like it was directly t tied to my hormonal cycle um and that was like libido so in my mind I was like I need to kill my libido and then this won't happen anymore right and like I said I was so sexually repressed like I had fantasies of what I wanted to do sexually but I actually like didn't know what my body wanted or what I felt comfortable with. So I just wanted to kill my libido. So I looked up online, like, how could you do that, right? I found some people talking about some herbs, but everybody who was serious about it said, like, they had tried it in, like, huge amounts of doses, like, huge doses, and that it hadn't worked for them, and it wasn't really effective. And some people talked about, like, off-brand, like, thyroid drugs, or, I mean, like, um off-label use of thyroid drugs and stuff like that or like cancer drugs like really strong shit and I was like well there's no way I'm gonna get a doctor to prescribe me that for off-label use of killing my libido so um I went to my psych um the doctor I was seeing at the time and I told him I didn't give him specifics but I basically told him my libido makes my dysphoria worse so how can you help me kill it and I said like before when I was on antidepressants it had stopped my libido and then I went off and then I had sexual arousal and then I went back on my antidepressants and the sexual arousal stayed so I was like can you up my antidepressants so he did he upped them a bit I think it made a little bit of a difference but not a huge difference um 
yeah, so I'm just going to list a few more of the symptoms that accompany this kind of dysphoria. So I would have intrusive thoughts and I would dissociate from my body. I would experience the phantom limb syndrome. I would be like frozen and unable to move sometimes. Uh, I would have like a loss of time. I would just be so anxious and... I... Oh, my cat's here. Um, and then the panic attacks, obviously. Um, really quick, I just want to talk about Packers, uh, which are, in case you don't know, like a prosthetic penis that you put in your underwear as for trans men. Um, I honestly always felt the having something in my underwear, like I tried it, I think once or twice with like rolled up socks and stuff. It just reminds me that it's not there because I can feel it moving against my body. So it's like something extra there reminding me that it's not there. Like I was really good at just it did, it completely ignoring that part of my body. Like I would just wear super baggy pants and um, I always wore boxers. I started wearing boxers as soon as I started identifying as trans. And I'm kind of large so my legs would like rub together. Oh. Sorry. And um, my boxer was like, would ride up and give me like a wedgie. So I had to learn to walk with my legs like farther apart. And so I would start to walk like a man. And um, yeah, I would wear like boxers that would stick out slightly of my pants so that you could see they were boxers. And then like really baggy jeans with like a big belt. And I figured like the way I walked and everything, like it was fine. Like I didn't need to think about it any more than that. Things down there were like not a problem. Um, until this shit happened. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I have hackers that never made sense to me. Um, I never actually wanted bottom surgery just because so many people who get it, the outcome, like for female to male transsexuals, like of the different types, there's like the micro penis one where you can't penetrate and you might not be able to orgasm again after any of these surgeries. There's like the phalloplasty one, like the one where they take the huge skin graft off your arm. And like, yeah, like what you, the outcomes are not always great. Um, some people do just live in pain for the rest of their lives. So I, I never really considered it a possibility. Um, also, I just wanna state for the record that I do not think what I experienced was at all anything analogous to autogynephilia. I've heard some people say before that um, trans men have autoandrophilia, and I don't think that's true because, well, no, I'm not gonna explain why, but it's just, it's completely different if you know anything about autogynephilia. Um, yeah, I don't really have any advice for anybody who experienced anything like this. I would love to give you advice, but I don't really know what to do. Um, for intrusive thoughts, I know dialectical behavioral therapy, I think, can help you address intrusive thoughts like that. Uh, so maybe that's something to look into. Um, so that's my video. As always, Leave your comments and specific questions and ideas for videos in the comments. Um, if you want to talk to me, you can comment on here or hit me up on Twitter. I'll put all my social media in the description as well as the medium piece that relates to this um, video. So, thanks for watching my video everyone.